What does an environment of failure look like? I mean, if you were to create that for a company and have them start thinking about that, what would, how would you direct them? It's really all about intelligent failure. So okay. I wanted to define that early on. Um, Amy Edmondson has a great new book. It talks about the right kind of wrong and it looks at failure. And one of the types of failure is intelligent failure, which is basically you do your homework and then you do thoughtful experimentation because mm -hmm. what you're trying to do is you're trying to innovate. You're trying something new. There is no data to support what you're doing. And so it just follows that you're going to have failures along the way. Uh, inventors, certainly they have failures. There's a famous quote from Thomas Edison that says, I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work <laughs> because that's how you get to something that does work is that you iterate and, you know, fail fast. It's a mantra in Silicon Valley, um, overused quite honestly, and not always followed appropriately, but <laughs> it's about, you know, we're startups, we're aggressive, we're trying something new, we're building something and it's better to fail fast and fail, you know, fail quickly. Uh, so you can pivot and get to the right idea. And so mm -hmm. you have to create a culture where it's okay to have those failures because, and you have to learn from them. That's the second piece. You have to make sure that you're going back and you're reviewing, okay, what did we do? Why didn't it work? All right. How are we going to tweak that? What are we going to try mm -hmm. differently? So when I'm talking about failure, I'm not saying mistakes. You know, it's not about not looking at your data and just making lots of mistakes. That's not mm -hmm. okay, especially if that happens over and over again. But it's about risk taking and innovating and being willing to try something that hasn't been tried before. Yeah. Okay. So it's more about experimenting as a philosophy than, um, than being sort of uh, plan A is the plan. Right. E experimenting and knowing that failure is going to be a part of that and being mm -hmm. okay with that. As a matter of fact, I mentioned Amy Edmondson, her first book and what she's the most well known for is psychological safety. And okay. in the process of doing her research at Harvard around psychological safety, she went into hospital settings and she felt like teams that had psychological safety would have fewer mistakes than teams who had low psychological safety, meaning they trusted one another. Yes. Um, they were open, they were able to support one another. And what she found was just the opposite. And she felt like she had failed because she had taken off the time of these healthcare professionals. Uh, they had done these studies over a long period of time. She had great sponsors who'd been supporting her. And then the data proved different than what she expected. But what she realized was not that they had fewer failures, uh, but that they were more open and honest about those failures. So they learned from those failures. So the teams that had low psychological safety, they were afraid to fail. Well, what happens in a healthcare environment when you don't tell others how you failed, what went wrong? It could be life or death. If you're not sharing yeah. that learning, you're not learning from it, then you're not moving forward. So it completely shifted her research when she recognized that, you know, no, failure is a good thing. And teams with high psychological safety, they're willing to admit those failures and learn from them, which is much more important. So again, low psychological safety didn't have fewer failures. They just weren't honest about their failures.